Good morning, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our September 2023 CT is Us monthly quiz. It's hard to believe we're in September. Where did the summer go? But hopefully, we'll stay warm for a few more months. Anyway, I have 10 terrific cases, and without further ado, let's get started. The most likely diagnosis in this patient two weeks post Whipple's procedure is... The key finding is that lesion in the right lobe of the liver, it has an air fluid level. Yes, you can get METs post-op, though that would be pretty quick. And why would you have an air fluid level in a MET? You can get necrotic METs, but not typically from pancreatic cancer. It doesn't look like an infarct. It's not wedge shape, And obviously, it's not a cyst, unless it's a cyst that became infected. This is a liver abscess. Only about 20% of abscesses in the liver or spleen actually have air fluid levels, but you need to be suspicious. In a patient several weeks post Whipple's procedure, even a month, who develops fever, you always want to look carefully at the surgical bed for collections, you want to look for pseudoaneurysms, and you want to look very carefully for the possibility of a liver abscess. This incidental adrenal mass is most likely well, I see a cystic lesion with rim-like calcification. Yes, you can see calcifications within tumors, within myelolipomas, which are benign, within uh, ACCs, primary adrenal cortical carcinomas, which are malignant. But when you have rim-like calcification, it's essentially almost always going to be a prior hematoma, whether it was from trauma, anticoagulant therapy, or just unknown sources. Theos, as I mentioned, can calcify Hemangiomas do not, though they can have punctate calcifications, and adenomas do not unless they've bled. So this is a prior hematoma. Now, I will make the point that when you have a prior bleed, rim calcification, in theory, I guess you couldn't exclude the underlying source of a bleed. Could it be an underlying tumor? But here, this is about two and a half centimeters. This is probably related to old trauma. And with trauma, we all know that the right adrenal gland is more commonly involved. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with weight loss. Weight loss, you're thinking malignancy. When I look carefully, I see a mass involving the fourth portion of duodenum and the proximal jejunum. We're kind of at the ligament of trites here. The truth is, I would have to give you credit for almost all of these answers. This could be lymphoma. I don't see nodes, but lymphoma can only be with a primary bowel mass. Gist tumors are typically exophytic, but can fool you, but I would say it's least likely a gist tumor. Adenocarcinoma statistically is most likely, and melanoma or metastatic disease in general can look just like a, an adenocarcinoma. So the truth is, I'm going to give you credit for all the answers, but the correct answer was adenocarcinoma. The least likely diagnosis in this case is, the key finding, of course, is this mass involving the left kidney, and it's a fat attenuation. It's not pure fat. It has some swirls within it. Now, I will say this is one of those cases where you say, aha, this is a myelolipoma, an AML of the left kidney. It would help me to look at the coronal and sagittal views. But we've seen a few cases of liposarcomas of the retroperitoneum, which have invaded the kidney. Could this be an adrenal myelolipoma? I give you credit to say that only because if it was large enough pushing down, that's theoretical but unlikely. This was a great case. This actually was a renal AML, but the least likely diagnosis is lymphoma. Lymphoma is a solid mass, can be single or multiple masses in the kidney, can involve the peri or pararenal space, but it's not a fatty tumor. So again, this was a large, atypical AML, but the least likely diagnosis is going to be lymphoma. In a four-year-old, the most likely diagnosis, large liver mass, neovascularity, what could this be? In a four-year-old, you don't get hepatic adenomas, and you don't get hepatomas. We can see hemangiomas, but they typically are very, very vascular with puddling. This has neovascularity. There's a mass in the liver, and the liver is enlarged. In a four-year-old, we're talking about hepatoblastoma. 
The differential diagnosis in this case includes all of the following except for. Well, what do I see? I see soft tissue infiltration around the aorta. And in the 3D views, you can see narrowing of the aorta right down to the origin of the common iliac vessels, which in a sense do have a funny appearance as well. What I'm thinking about in this case, when I see soft tissue infiltration and narrowing of a vessel, this is not atherosclerotic disease. I'm thinking of vasculitis. Maybe could I be dealing with um, a range of different vasculitis, Takayashus, Kawasaki's. Could I be dealing with polyarthritis nodosa? It also can be retroperitoneal fibrosis, an inflammatory response, commonly does narrow the uh, aorta and also pulls the ureters in. Can't see much of the ureters here, but what I do see of the left ureter on the 3D, the ureters in the right spot, that makes it less likely retroperitoneal fibrosis. Fibromuscular dysplasia is one of the things that gives you beating of vessels, gives you also uh, aneurysms or pseudoaneurysms, causes narrowing, but also soft tissue infiltration. So that's in a reasonable thought. Could this be lymphoma? It would be the meekest lymphoma I've ever seen. Lymphoma can encase the aorta and you see bulky adenopathy, but this is very minimal. This is not lymphoma. If I would have written down treated lymphoma, I guess then you would have uh, gone with that answer perhaps as a possibility, but I'm not thinking about lymphoma in this case. So that's the answer, D. The most likely diagnosis in this case well, I see a cystic mass that's enhancing in the pancreatic head. It's vascular. You can see on the image on your right with the narrow windows. It could be metastatic renal cell, but I see the kidneys and they look okay. It's not the typical look of adenocarcinoma, which is typically going to be hypovascular. The, th the thickening of the wall, the appearance is just not good for me for serous cyst adenoma. So the most likely diagnosis, vascular mass is a neuroendocrine tumor. Remember, cystic neuroendocrine tumors are very common, and this is one of the examples. The most likely diagnosis in this patient post-liver transplant is, well, this patient had portal hypertension, which is why they got the transplant. The spleen is enlarged because of portal hypertension. Now you see large wedge-shaped defects in the spleen. That's classic splenic infarcts. Patients with liver transplants, you always look carefully at the vessels. Make sure there's no vessel occlusion, particularly hepatic artery. You want to make sure there's no liver infarct or liver abscess. This is a good example also of looking at the spleen because splenic infarcts are not uncommon. Uh, in terms of abscesses, this is more geographic than abscesses. It's not lymphoma. I guess after a while with a transplant, you can get post-transplant lymphoproliferative disease, PTLD, but this is just post-transplant, and this does not have the look of a sequestration. Classic splenic infarcts. The differential diagnosis in this case includes, well, what do we see? We see an infiltrating process in the left peri and pararenal space. I look at this, the first thing I say is lymphoma, and I'll probably be right. And in fact, this was lymphoma. But I've seen lipid-poor liposarcomas occur and look very similar. That's a thought. Metastatic melanoma, the most common lesion in the pararenal space is metastasis from melanoma. So all three are good choices. I mentioned this ended up being lymphoma, but the answer is D, all of the above. The most likely diagnosis in this case of virtual colonoscopy, the endoluminal view very nicely shows a polypoid mass, which could be almost anything. But then you look in the ascending colon, you see a one and a half centimeter mass. That's a fat attenuation. And this is classic for lipoma. One of the nice things about CT with virtual colonoscopy, we could look at the density. Most masses, whether the polyps be it adenomas or carcinomas, they're solid. Retained feces typically has tagging agent, but a lesion that's all fat, that's going to be a lipoma. Well, those were 10 excellent cases. I hope you got all of them right. If you didn't get them right, I hope you learned something. And we really thank you for paying attention. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. 
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.